Well, good evening, everybody. We'd like to welcome you tonight to our February 4th uh, Hendersonville Regional Planning Commission meeting. And uh, we'd like to note that there's a quorum and would also like to welcome our new commissioner, Mr. Owen Hardcastle, and want to welcome you to our planning commission. Thank you for your service and your willingness to be on board. Uh, we'd note that uh, Ms. Silkwood is absent along, um, I think, Longmire. and Ms. Longmire, Ms. Longmire is absent as well. So we want to make Barry that, Hardwick. and Barry Hardwick. Who, uh, so we want to want to remember him, by the way, and our intentions, especially our prayer intentions. Uh, he's uh, having some health issues right now, so he'll be out for the next month or two. So let's pray for Mr. Hardwick. At this time, we're going to stand and uh, have a word of prayer, and Vice Chairman McCormick is going to open us in prayer. All right, let's bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for this commission. Thank you for this city, Lord. Help us to do the work that you would have us to do. Bless all those who are sick, Lord. Bless those who wanted to be here but could not be here. And Lord, we just ask that you guide us through this process and let everything that we do tonight be pleasing to you. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you. Thank you. Tonight we have uh, one public hearing, a request by Pate Montgomery LLC to approve a final development plan for the Jack Alexander property, Lot 2, Pet Suites, and to add, a, add animal care and veterinary services kennel to the list of permitted uses to the property as identified by Sumner County Property Tax Map uh, 159JA017.00. And we have uh, nobody signed up for that hearing, so I will declare that hearing closed. Uh, is there any request for information and assistance? Hearing none. Uh, additions to the agenda? Hearing none. We have the minutes from uh, January 7th, that's 2020. Do I have a motion to accept? Motion to accept. Mr. Altizer makes the motion. Who makes the second? Second. Second by Ms. McCormick. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It carries. And are there any abstentions? Uh, okay, yes. Uh, one, one abstention. Ms. Stringfellow. Okay, we also have uh, the preliminary final development plan, Jack Alexander, uh, excuse me, Jack Alexander property, lot two pet suites, and uh, who will be handling this one, Mr. Free? Our assistant director, Timothy Witten. Uh, Mr. Witten, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, this is the, uh, the final development plan for Jack Alexander property. Uh, this site is located at the intersection of Maple Road Boulevard and East Bain Street. Uh, the, uh, the preliminary development plan for this project was denied by the Planning Commission back in October of 2017 and then was approved by BOMA in November of 2017. That approval rezoned that lot um, that's highlighted there um, from Office PD to GC PD and added self-storage to the list of allowed uses. Uh, and it showed a two-story, 75,000 square foot building on the site. Um, the self-storage user backed out and now Pet Suites is wanting to locate on the site. Pet Suites is an upscale pet grooming and, and boarding facility. Uh, they provide indoor and outdoor pet, uh, pet accommodations. They have submitted this FDP uh, as a required follow-up to the preliminary development plan and in addition are requesting to add uh, animal care and vet services to the list of allowed uses which would then allow their facility. Uh, their building will be a single story 11,000 square foot facility which is one story less and 64,000 square feet less than the building that was shown on the on the uh, the PDP, the, the self-storage facility. The proposed building and the outdoor play area will be about 105 feet from the residential subdivision to the rear of the lot, which is about 75 feet further away from that residential subdivision than the self-storage facility would have been. Um, this, uh, this FDP is in substantial compliance with the preliminary development plan and the, uh, the applicants have agreed to all staff comments. 
Okay, I noticed that uh, they're going to work with you on comment number three. Kind of fill us in on what that's all about. Yes, yeah, so um, that's the, the comment number three is re, is asking them to um, to improve the building articulation, the the way that the walls uh, recess in and project out from each other. And they provided clarification on the projections that that that, that, that they are providing, and they clarified that on the front they are doing some 18 to 24 inch projections in other areas they'll have 8 to 10 inch projections so in staff's opinion that that meets the the intent of the design guidelines okay and they're going to work with the they yes. work with you on that yes we, okay. we, yeah we've already had discussions about that and um, they'll be following up with the site plan on the next agenda okay. uh, we'd like to take a moment I mean uh, the applicant if you're here we'd love to hear from you just for a moment I know that you're agreeing we're I like the the uh, look of your building and uh, tell us a little bit about you and what you're going to be doing. Sure. Um, it's for the civil engineer on this project. Uh, the developer Hogan Real Estate is here as well. If there's any questions specifically for them. Uh, Pet Suites, as um, Timothy said, is an upscale uh, um, animal uh, dog and cat boarding facility. They have uh, grooming within the site. Um, <laughs> Training for pets. There is a small retail component as well, where you can purchase um, uh, things for the animals that are, that will be housed there. Um, there is an outdoor uh, play area that's shown on the plans as well. Uh, we wanted to note that this outdoor play area is for daytime use only, and that no animals will be out there during the evening hours and in the, in the nighttime hours. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, I, I uh, would note that. Uh, of course, this is an additional use. It does fit within the the, uh, the zoning, but it is an added use. But I would note that just uh, down the road in the Kroger Center, where that we have a pet store that's in place, and across the street, so that very much fits in with what's around there in terms of uh, of that. I think it's a good use. Um, uh, if this goes forward, uh, this is not one of those where we can declare. A minor minor amendment, uh, so it will go to BOMA for <coughs> approval. But uh, um, so that's where this particular plan sits. It will go for Miss Longmire. And welcome. Uh, we we need to mark her here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just like to add, up the street before you get to Thornton's on the left is another veterinary clinic mm -hmm. on Gallatin Road. Does that have the same zoning? in order for it to be there and was there a variance made or addition made there what what's the story there I, I believe that that is a uh, general commercial zoning um that is a that is a true vet clinic this, this is not a vet clinic um the reason the reason the activity type is called out as animal care and vet services is because kennel falls within that activity type as, as does vet services um but yeah, that facility you're talking about is a vet, and it, it is a permitted use in that zone. With so, this particular use, though, will there be a veterinary service there uh, as well? Is that going to be? Uh, no, there's there's not any veterinary services. Okay, there's not going to be there. Okay, Correct. thank you, Ms. Longmore. I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. So on down the line, 20 years from now, and this business is no longer there, can a veterinary clinic go in under this zoning addition? Yes, it could. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions, uh, Mr. Woodcock? I know you said this goes to Boma. Will there be a public hearing at Boma, Mr. Christopher? You'd like to answer that question? Uh, probably. Uh, probably not. Uh, typically, we've got two things going on here. Uh, we have this has a uh, preliminary development plan that was previously approved. And so now, now the proper thing is to uh, have a final development plan that is in substantial compliance, which this is, uh, with the, uh, but also they needed to add a use. We have another process for adding a use, which under our old zoning ordinance, which this is, this is under that, uh, prior to, um, this was submitted prior to, the, uh, 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 prior to the new zoning ordinance being adopted. And so uh, the way addition of uses happen is, it can happen at the at the uh, planning commission without a public hearing. We have we chose to have one tonight. We have over the last couple of years we've just went ahead and had one. Uh, but what happens is is that 
Uh, it's up to the Planning Commission to determine if it wants to have a public hearing. But given that if, if the Planning Commission decided it wanted to do a public hearing, then it would just push it out another month because we'd have to advertise and, and let people know. We just went, at, we just went ahead and, and did the public hearing. But there's not necessarily a public hearing required at BOMA unless they request uh, for it to be a public hearing. And it's only going to be a one reading. It won't be two readings. Will the residential owners be notified of the change? I think we can. Yeah. Huh? They have, they been, have, notified. Been, yeah. They have been notified. They've been notified of this for tonight. So they're aware of the of the of the change, but there won't be any notice passed tonight. Well, this would be the only notice. That's correct. Yeah, as long as they're notified, I'm happy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hold on a second. He's here, and he has met with the neighbors and uh, neighboring representatives to discuss the project. Okay. okay. Ms. McCormick. Um, I had a question for Mr. Free, and just to verify, the, previously we had, and I remember the storage facility that was that came before us, and it was like a two-story. Yes. Storage facility, and there was some opposition. If we had like a magic wand or an undo button, basically, if we would have un, if we could undo what we did when we approved that, this permitted use would have been this use would have been in that original. Yeah. Yes, it was. It would have been. That, that's that's a good uh, uh, that's that's a good that's a good question. It's a good astute uh, comment on that because basically, and we don't really quite understand. It wasn't anything that staff or the planning commission really requested from the previous folks that got the storage added but I think one thing they did is they just kind of threw some stuff off the ship to kind of help lighten the load and say we want this storage use and we're getting rid of all these other some of these other uses and this particular use would have been an allowed use so, uh, but it was it was cast off and then now it's kind of you know, so just back. to verify the property that ultimately they abandoned the process of creating the storage unit and had they not even come before us from the beginning and asked for that, this would have been a permitted use already. That's correct. Right. So we're basically just kind of putting ourselves back to where we were as if that other applicant hadn't come forward. Yes. Right. And, and like Mr. Witten had said, is on general commercial property, this use is a, and the other uses there are allowed anyway, just by right. There isn't any special permission or conditional use permit or, or anything like that that would have to be obtained. Okay, thank you, Mr. Free. I see nobody else in the queue. Do I have a motion to approve with all staff comments? Moved to approve by Mr. Woodcock. Do we have a second? Second, second by Ms. McCormick. Uh, Mr. Lee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, not very often would I ever disagree with you, but I'm going to have to disagree with you on, on this particular project. I think the project is great. Uh, I think it would be a great addition to our city. I'm not sure that Main Street is the is the right location for this facility i don't think it strikes what we're trying to necessarily do uh, in that particular area uh, and i do understand that it would have been a permitted use if the other had not been done but the other was done so we now have an option to look at this and to see how do we want the rest of main street to be developed we had an opportunity today at the Chamber of Commerce meeting to talk about the things that we're trying to do in this city to create jobs, uh, quality office space uh, that we can bring to the community that will get people off of Vietnam vets and off of 65 and, and working here. And I don't think this particular project really moves in that particular direction. Um, if it's uh, approved, uh, I'm not on a hobby horse against it. I don't mean that. I'm, I know the developer uh, or, or the company is trying to do something, and it would be a first-class facility. I'm confident of that. But with neighbors around, even if the neighbors have been contacted, uh, it's situated uh, next to banks and between banks, and it's if you, near City Hall. Uh, and I'm just not sure... Uh, 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 a pet store is one thing. A pet care facility, to me, is something entirely different. And so uh, I, I, I'm going to have to be opposed to it. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, would there be, just in all fair to you, would there be anybody want to speak in favor in a discussion mode? Motion's been made and seconded. Anybody want to speak in favor or ready for the question? Okay, hearing no com Got to, we're going to call the question um, on approval. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. 
All right, one, if, one, one uh, no. Project's approved. Um, we have uh, site plans. Uh, we have two here by Durham. They agree with all staff comments. I would entertain, you want to move to group and approve by, by Mr. Altizer's got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. McCormick. Um, all in favor, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it's approved, so ordered. We're going to move now to a uh, site plan uh, for take five oil change. And Mr. Free, who's going to handle this one? Uh, that will be Mr. Witten as well. Mr. Witten. Uh, thank you. This is the uh, second of two groups of townhomes that are allowed in Durham Farms. The first one being the, the ones that are currently under construction. Um, well, we're, we're, we're take five. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we've already approved the other oh, two. Oh, wow. I missed that. We, yeah. we done 10 4 on too that fast one. for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take five. Okay. Uh, so this site is on West Main Street across from the Pony Express and next to Brown's Florist. Uh, it is zoned general commercial. Uh, proposed use is an oil change facility, which is an allowed use by right in this zone. Um, they have agreed to all staff comments, and if you have any questions for me, I'll be glad to, to take them. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, are you finished, Mr. Whitney? Yes. Okay. Ms. Longmire. I would like to have a little bit better explanation of, is this the vacant building? Is it a vacant spot that used to be a nail spa? No, I mean, it used to, it used to be the old uh, Phillips Robinson funeral oh, home. Oh, okay, okay, I'm with it, you. It is now vacant. Yeah, it, it's, okay, gotcha. It's right out in front of Captain Video yeah. and right. where, yeah, they, yeah. where right. they sell Christmas trees at and flowers. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Okay, uh, they agree with all staff comments. Is the applicant here? Okay, um, uh, I would uh, just would like to introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about what you're doing here. I want to give you a few moments and... Uh, specifically, uh, talk to us. The doors will be in the in the rear. I'm assuming. Uh, first of all, my name, excuse me, is Ken Knuckles. I'm with the Development Management Group here in Nashville, uh, representing Volunteer Village LLC, who are the property owners of the um, Volunteer Village Shopping Center. Um, yes, that's correct. The bay doors will be directed east-west. Uh, so that they won't be a direct, in direct line of sight from West Main Street. Um, we work with staff quite a bit. We did come with, to them with an initial proposal to, I guess, make the, the building parallel to West Main Street as the, the tenants <coughs> desire to have those, day, those bay doors visible. Okay. Uh, but end result is that we've got the building that's now perpendicular to Main, so those, those bay doors are not in direct line of sight. Plus, we're at staff's request, adding some additional evergreen plantings and stuff around that to help screen it further. I think it's a very nice looking building. Are there any more questions by uh, staff? Uh, Mr. Lee? Yeah, uh, and I think I know this. Um, I just wanted to make sure the bright yellow signage to take five and drive through oil change, that will, be, that will not be uh, on the front of the building that will be in the rear as you come around? Um, in the images you're seeing up there now, the bottom right corner is what will be directly visible from West Main Street. So there will be signage on that wall. Yeah. Uh, Does that signage meet Does it conform to our signage, signage yeah, requirements? I believe, and Cindy, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I believe the signage that's shown here is the initial signage that they had shown. Um, I believe they are reducing the signage from what's so. shown there because, th again, this is the very first. Well, so there will be not be any monument signage out in front? Uh, like I believe there is a, there is a monument. Sign. I know yeah. that. Uh, yes, there, there will be a ground sign. There will be a ground sign. Yes. Right. Okay. And any of the signage that we're proposing here, uh, of course, the tenant will be coming through independent of what our efforts are here to, to get this approved for construction. But they'll be coming through with a separate application for signage. Five percent. To my knowledge, they're not intending to request any kind of variances from what's allowed. Good. Yeah. yeah. My, my, my just, you know, just the aesthetics. Sure. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of the development plan itself, you did a great 
job. I agree with everyone else. Uh, all of the uh, plantings and things that you have planned, I think, will be will be very nice. We have other or similar facilities on that stretch mm -hmm. uh, of of road. It's just the the bright yellow that might. Uh, and maybe that's what you're looking for, the shock effect to catch your attention. But, I mean, uh, I just want to make sure that that fits into our um, color schemes and I don't sign think it's, ordinances. Yeah, I don't think it you know, has anything really to do with the shock effect beyond the fact that it's just their prototypical colors and their prototypical signage. Um, we've done quite a bit of upgrades to the architecture on the building, working with staff. Uh, there were other prototypical type or brand type uh, elements of the building design that we've sacrificed um, in order to satisfy the city, um, and we, you know, that, I think it's important to them to try and retain at least their signage image or their branding. Yeah. On the public works side, um, what do we have in work? Uh, what are they going to have? Are they going to have a write-in? Uh, how are they going to? Traffic right there can be. An issue sometimes. What, what's the what's the plan getting in and out? Okay. Yeah. The the curb cut that you see there um, to West Main Street is an existing curb cut. We're going to improve that. Um, and then there's another curb cut that's further east of that. Actually, it's before you get beyond the Take Five parcel. There's an existing curb cut that we're going to close. Um, and beyond that, we're not proposing any new access at this time for okay. for the center. Ms. Longmire. Can I have a tonight? I'd like to go back to that last picture that showed the... Um, okay. Are the, are the two on the far left, up and down, are they, are they going to be on the sides of the building? Yeah, let me walk you, let me, let me walk you through. Okay. okay. Yeah, this one right here that I have highlighted, that's the very front of it. Yes. And then this right here is the very back of it that'll be uh, faced toward the video store. Yes. Uh, back there, and actually, this door right here is actually the only do real door right. to the building. You don't go into this facility, so customers don't go in there. Uh, and then this right here uh, is the west side of the building, and then this is the east side of the building. Uh, is is the uh, things and. And Ken was correct, is uh, Take 5 did their prototype of what they came in and then what they have here with the actual building design is a significant difference um, from uh, what they came in. This probably is the nicest Take 5 oil facility that, I, that we, have, we have seen. I think Ken I can could probably, to that. Ken could probably echo to that. Mm -hmm. And on the signage, um, what happens a lot of times is uh, on these color renderings and stuff, is the developers they'll or the business owners they'll put it on there for the site plan uh, but then we cover it and make sure it notes that you know that they're aware uh, this is not approval of that you have still have to meet the sign guidelines so there's been a lot of instances where somebody had images on there but that doesn't mean right. it's approved it still has to meet the the sign requirements and I, and I think when we looked at this I think actually the drive through oil change and then you stay in your car and all that stuff i'm pretty sure that was close to meeting it it was really the can yeah. i think yeah. the can had to shrink if i remember right but whatever the whatever the rules are about our sign uh, uh the size of the sign they could have uh, it'll be they'll be limited to that so they can't do they can't do more than i that. mean signage and sign permit as i understand it is all reviewed and issued through st at staff level so if Planning Commission it required us to submit a sign package that was much more specific than this. Um, then we would have been happy to do that, but that's, yeah. you know, I guess you guys aren't really responsible for reviewing that. Did, did that kind of answer that, yeah. Commissioner Longmire? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Longmire. Anything else? Okay. okay. We got a motion to approve by Mr. Lee. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Altizer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's carried. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Next, we have the uh, Tau Townhome site plan. Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah. I'm very sorry to interrupt, but can we go back and let me clarify 
one thing from the uh, Jack Alexander matter? Uh, hold that thought just okay. one second. Can we take care of, of this one site plan? Shouldn't take certainly, it, and then we'll come right back to it. Is certainly. that okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so we've got the Tau uh, site plan real quick here, and they agree with all staff comments. Who's handling yeah. this? Uh, I will. I will take care of that this evening. Okay, and uh, this is a. Uh, a uh, 14 unit townhome. It's uh, it's that piece of property that's uh, on Old Shackle Island Road that's right across yeah. from Wessington Apartments. It's actually one of our very last pieces of multifamily straight zoning. Uh, and so uh, we have a developer that's that's looking to, to build these uh, 14 units of townhomes. We've worked with the developer and um, uh, worked with them on the design. They've made substantial changes from their initial submission and everything is in order uh, and I believe the developer has agreed to all the staff comments on some just small particular issues uh, that we uh, need to work out okay thank you mr. free um, do we have any questions for the planning director or for the applicant is the applicant here okay okay they're agreeing with all staff comments um, I've heard mr. Free's presentation do I have a motion to approve Move to approve by Ms. Stringfellow. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. McCormick. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's carried. So ordered. Now, Mr. Cook, we're going to come back and we're going to go back into the agenda just for a second. I think Mr. Cook wants to make a clarification on the uh, Jack Alexander property final development plan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just after speaking with these gentlemen, wanted to clarify something. Mr. Horn was mistaken in one of his comments when he said that we had spoken directly with some of the neighbors. That is not entirely correct. Okay. I did speak with Charles Kimbrough, who it was my understanding when the prior self-storage project was going through that he was involved on behalf of some of the neighbors. I spoke to him about this project. I did not to speak to any of the neighbors directly. These gentlemen our neighbors and wanted me to clarify with this board that that was an incorrect statement that was made by Mr. Horn and so I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would hope that uh, since we've got some concerned neighbors here that we would speak with them and do everything we can do. Absolutely. Yeah. M Mr. Chairman, we've made one exception, I think, to bring this back up. I'd like to hear from the neighbors. If uh, let me just ask, we had a public hearing uh, on the on the uh, agenda tonight for that purpose it's been declared closed I would if you want to suspend the rules for this I would be no problem do that I was going to suggest just have a, another public hearing at BOMA and if they actually want to speak they know now to sign up and speak versus going back and rehashing it after we voted tonight Yeah, I, I think that would be appropriate. I, I do think, though, that when the comment was made uh, that neighbors had been consulted and that there was no opposition to this particular plan uh, was a, a rather major misrepresentation uh, to this commission. I, I would make the uh, yeah. observation um, uh, that we do have, we have a public hearing on the agenda tonight Nobody signed up. However, you know, we could can open it back. Up. I could open it back up right now. If the applicants, if the applicant is would so would so be, be open to that. And we could just go ahead and hear from these these uh, residents right now. Mr. Cook, would that be Certainly. okay? That, yes, that's fine with me. Okay, yeah, well, then, okay. then let's let's do that. And then if uh, on the BOMA issue, I will leave that up to the planning director and yeah. whoever to decide if that's the course of action. But since we already have a public hearing on the agenda, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and we'll hear from the neighbors tonight. If, if whoever would like to speak, I don't have your names up here on the list, but if you would like to uh, come up, give us your name. Ms. Ms. Beery will put your name down and uh, as in speaking okay and if you would just give us your name and your address uh, Ch Chuck Roten and I live at 116 Burris Avenue behind this property that we're talking about uh, I wasn't really prepared to talk talk tonight because I thought it would go to Beaumont but I just want to make sure that the water issue has been addressed up 
I didn't see any kind of detention pond or nothing. And the Mr. Alexander's house is is two foot from the property line. <coughs> and if you will go on YouTube and look up Pet Smarts and look at the noise that comes out of uh, this uh, facility, uh, any not only this one but any facility of a dog's. Uh, uh, really bore them, you know. But really, there's a major water problem here, and it needs to be made sure that it's taken care of. You can see right there, Mr. Alexander's house is right on the property line, and and uh, a dog barking inside the building is going to be reverberating. And like I said, it's not a good use for the property, you know. And I. You know, I don't know why they keep, you know, they keep coming up with these uh, storage facility, a dog facility. I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is something the city could be proud of with the right building there, you know. And uh, I just think it's a, a, it's not a good use of the property. As long, it's not going to bother me as long as the dogs are not barking. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to hear dogs all day long or, or at feeding time. And I'm not, I, I, you know, I like dogs, but they get nervous, they get excited in these buildings. And just, just look on YouTube. Look at, look at the noise that comes out of that. And and somebody somewhere down the line has got to bore a hole underneath Gallatin Road. Because it just won't take the water. The water will go almost uh, halfway up to Jack Alexander's house, and and it's just uh, it's just no place for the water to go, you know. And I just want to make sure you you are aware of that. I know the last time when they had the storage building, I brought pictures in to show where it was uh, flooded. And like I said, I wasn't prepared for this tonight. But you know, he said he. You know, he talked to the neighbors. Well, I knew that wasn't true, and nobody talked to me, you know. And Charles Kimbrough, we mentioned Charles Kimbrough's name, but Charles Kimbrough didn't have anything to do with the storage facility that I know of. He certainly didn't speak, when you know, against it or for it. or in, I don't know how Charles Kimbrough's name got into this, but I just want to make sure you're aware of it before you say it's okay, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just in response, Mr. Mr. Mayo, do you have anything that you can add about the public public work situation about the water issue? Since this was a final development plan, we didn't get into the details. They do propose one or two areas for stormwater detention, and they're in the site development design. Is when we really dig into that and make sure they address stormwater issues. Okay. They've submitted uh, a site plan that's got that stuff on it. Yeah, so they're, and they've submitted a site plan that's going to have some of that stuff on it, but we need to look into that. Who's next? Go ahead, please. I'm Jerry Phillips. I live at 112 Burris Avenue. Um, like Chuck, I was unprepared. I, didn't, I just found out about this about a week and a half ago, and uh, I came here tonight just to find out what it was about. Okay. I didn't know you guys were going to vote on a final thing, and that this was okay. the only chance we had to speak. But... The, my biggest concern about is is about the dogs barking. This pen that they're talking about, this run, is going to be right directly behind my house. When dogs bark, they make every dog in the neighborhood bark. We have ordinances that somebody has a dog that barks all the time, it's against the law. But how are you going to enforce that with these people? That's what dogs do. And you put a bunch of them in the pen, they're going to have everybody barking. And I don't think it's fair that I should have to sit and listen to that all day long. It's going to be right up against my property line. And, uh, you know, I, I just feel like this whole thing's been handled a little bit quick and kind of shoved in our lap, and we don't have any time to prepare for anything. Uh, it kind of reminds me of something Jerry Spence told me one time. He said that justice is like caviar. It smells fishy, and it usually doesn't taste very good, and only the rich can get it. And that's kind of how I feel about this whole thing tonight. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Um, and let me just add that uh, we can, you, are we going to do yeah. that? What, what I think we can do is there won't actually be a public hearing when it goes to BOMA, uh, but uh, they have citizen comments. And I think what we could do, I mean, it's not typical that we do it, 
But what we can do is everybody that was not all the neighbors that were notified about the meeting tonight, we can send a letter to let you know when it's going to be on the BOMA agenda. And so even though there wouldn't be necessarily a public hearing, uh, you could still you could still uh, attend the meeting and and at citizens comments, you could speak to it. Isn't that correct, Daryl? I believe so. So so there'd be an opportunity to do that. But the the ultimate decision on this use uh, rest with uh, BOMA. Yeah. So now the, the the plan development itself is in compliance and it still rests with BOMA. But, uh, you know, it could be a it could be a situation where BOMA could approve the building design and all of that, but not approve the use. So that's that potentially could could have an impact. Mr. Woodcock. Just want to take a step further and clarify. So next Tuesday will go for uh, general. General, that's right. Correct. So that they'll have a chance to vote on that. Yes. And then the following meeting two at weeks. BOMA two weeks later will that's be correct. the only vote. On yes. This. Yeah, okay. it'll just be a one hearing. Not a hearing. It'll be a, a reading. Uh, so there wouldn't be two readings. There just would be one uh, one full BOMA meeting. But it'll go like ne if it would go next week to the BOMA general committee, and then it would go from BOMA general committee. Uh, to the full general committee, to full BOMA committee, two weeks at two weeks after that. But we can we can do that. We can we can send a letter out to let to let the ne same neighbors we we let know about the hearing tonight. Just let them know that um, kind of update on what the status of it is, and that it'll be at BOMA, uh, and it'll be on the agenda. So. And uh, just before I turn over to Mr. Lee and then Ms. Longmire, I procedurally I just wanted. I want us to be clear that the added use feature that's required a public hearing, which we did, uh, that we have gone back and and made sure that we made accommodation for that. And so that has been done. Um, we actually uh, had the, uh, the hearing. Nobody signed up for it. And uh, we've reopened it back up and allowed them to speak. So hearing, if there are any others, are there any others to speak? I think duty left. It's already, it's okay. already left. Okay. Well, then we're going to go ahead and declare the public hearing closed again. And we have had the public hearing. We've already voted on the development plan, so we go forward with that. And uh, as Mr. Free says, and that will move us to our next item on the agenda. Which, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I was Mr. Lee, I'm sorry. And then yeah. Ms. Longmire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to make sure that the minutes reflect that uh, when the vote was taken, that the presentation was not entirely accurate and that we voted without the full knowledge and comments from the neighbors. Uh, I think the minutes should also reflect uh, the integrity of Mr. Cook to come back and to let us know uh, that that was something that was misspoke, which I appreciate, Marty, uh, that you did that and the owners uh, and developers that they came back and did that that it's you know all above board and and as it should be but uh, you know truthfully when we took the vote we didn't have the whole story uh, but I don't wish to go back and to revote it there's another opportunity at BOMA for them uh, to to make their issues uh, uh, known but I do appreciate even though they perhaps were not prepared that this that, that our citizens did speak and I appreciate mr. Cook you bringing this back uh, to, to our attention because you know we all want just what's best for the city and we want to make the best decision with we can with all of the facts that are pre presented so and, thank you and just before Ms. Longmire speaks just before uh, mr. Lee's already hit it but um, from a parliamentary standpoint um, the vote was taken tonight. It can also be reopened tonight. But he is correct that uh, there is another opportunity that is coming forward. And since it's a final development plan, uh, it still has to go to BOMA anyway. So it, it, would, it would make sense that we could go ahead. And, and they were in compliance with the final development plan. So uh, we'll go forward. Ms. Longmire. I have two things I'd like to say. First of all, I'd like to say that when it goes to BOMA, is there a way that we can note that there was information that we didn't have at the time of the vote and we opened this back up so that there was some 
neighborhood contention, might you might say. Yeah, what what we can what we'll do on that is uh, Lauren will have it in the minutes, and and it won't be approved minutes by the time it goes to general committee. Uh, but we'll include uh, the the uh, uh, the pieces relating to this in the minutes from that. But what I'll do, and Lauren, what I'll do, what we'll do on that is I'll just do an extra memo that'll explain this so that it's very clear, you know, exactly what transpired uh, so that BOMA is fully aware, the general committee is fully aware of it, and then BOMA, that'll follow from the general committee, and then all that documentation will follow to BOMA, so it'll be very, it'll be very clear. So I'll, I'll make sure to do that. Okay. 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 Cool. And then I have one other thing I'd like to address. I want to tell these neighbors that you have to attend these meetings when there's things that are happening in the city, whether it's right behind you or somewhere else that you have some interest in. You have to know what's going on. You can't just rely on us and the, and the BOMA people to do everything. And, of course, you, could, you didn't sign up to say anything because you said you didn't know anything. Is that correct? Yes. And we didn't know they were going to tell that they met the... the yeah. So, so at the time, you, but at the time you walked in and could have signed up, you didn't really think you had anything to say because you didn't know what was going on. I was sorry. I was, this is the first I heard about it. I thought there was going to be a hearing like the last time, and I thought there was going to be after that an, another meeting before there was a final vote. I didn't know that everything was going to happen in one night. We, we didn't even well, know what was going okay, to Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna withhold right here. Um, we've already gone down this road, Ms. Longmire. Uh, with the with the residents and they understood uh, they they already made their uh, sentiments known as to why they didn't speak and we respect that uh, and I do believe that um, were they aware of what truly was going on they would have signed up so we're, we're good with that but uh, uh, are there any other questions Ms. Longmire I oh, know I've been cut off that's fine thank you all right, uh, we have staff reviewed projects, which uh, you have right in front of you, and you have the staff reviewed projects. I will not take time to read all of those. Uh, you have those before you. Uh, I would ask, are there any questions about any of those projects that are before you that are approved or pending? Okay, hearing none, we need to take no action on that. Um, we move now to um, the resolutions. There are three that we need to consider tonight. And the first one is revolu uh, res revolution, resolution 2020-02, uh, and it's the Indian Lake Village uh, Phase Three, Section B, One and Two, Ashcrest Street acceptance. We have that in front of you. I will not take time to read the whole resolution, um, but do we have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved by Ms. McCormick. Second. Second by Ms. Stringfellow. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, that's approved. Move now to 2019-08, a resolution acceptance of dedication of the completed streets at Saundersville Station, Phase 6, Hendersonville, Sumner County, Tennessee. Move to approve. Move to approve by Ms. McCormick. A second? Second? By Ms. Stringfellow. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. And that's approved. And then 202001, this is the uh, resolution formally uh, recognizing Dr. Bryant Millsap's resignation. I'm going to read this one. Whereas Charles Commissioner Lee has requested the Hendersonville Regional Planning Commission formally recognize Dr. Bryant Millsap for his years of service and the difference he has made in the quality of life in the city of Hendersonville. Whereas Dr. Bryant Millsap has served as a member of the Hendersonville Regional Planning Commission for 14 years. And whereas Dr. Millsap's service has been marked by integrity of action, purpose, and in the best interest of the citizens of the city of Hendersonville, and whereas Dr. Millsap's service has been in a period of continuous and rapid growth uh, for the city, warranting careful deliberation to maintain the high quality of life in Hendersonville of Hendersonville while encouraging needed planned development, and whereas Dr. Millsap's service has consistently honored his profound faith in God, always sprinkled with an appropriate sense of humor, Therefore, and therefore be it resolved that the Hendersonville Regional Planning Commission formally and unanimously commends Dr. Bryant Millsaps for his long and mer meritorious service to the commission and to the city where he continues to reside. It's adopted on this fourth day of February 2020 in Hendersonville, Sumner County, Tennessee. Do we have a motion to, to, approve. Move to approve by Mr. Lee, second by Ms. McCormick? All right. Any more discussion? 
Any comments? All in favor say aye. aye. It's approved. We now go to planning director comments. All right, I just have a few comments here uh, to end the evening. Uh, this has been a very busy start uh, in uh, January and here now going into February. Uh, the amount of submissions and the amount of activity going on are surprisingly extremely strong uh, for the first of the year uh, compared to the last previous years. Uh, so there's a lot of different things going on, a lot of things that are going to come before uh, this commission uh, over the next several months. Uh, also, uh, the an update on the Baird Farm annexation and rezoning. Uh, that uh, had uh, was set, was at the end of last year had come through the planning commission that's worked its way through Boma and that's been approved and that property now I think actually is now annexed into the fully annexed into the city uh, uh, so that has been completed um, additionally uh, our new zoning ordinance uh, was approved by Boma uh, since we last met and I think all of you have copies of the new of the new zoning ordinance. Uh, we're very excited about that. The staff is, uh, has already been utilizing uh, this new ordinance in a lot of different ways. We really feel very strongly that the quality of the ordinance, uh, it wouldn't be surprising to us if we start seeing other cities taking large parts of our ordinance, if not removing their ordinance and adopting our ordinance. Uh, we have what we call a model ordinance that we've created here in-house uh, that I think uh, a lot of other communities uh, will want to uh, want to duplicate uh, to get our results uh, that they see in our community and um, and the ease at which the uh, new zoning ordinance works. Um, continue to read the uh, uh, continue to read your strong towns book. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna definitely get together in the next couple of months and have a discussion on that. And Owen, we need to get you get you a copy of that as well. Uh, next week, I'm speaking. Uh, to at the uh, summer Sumner Women's Council of Realtors uh, to talk about uh, the things that are going on here in Hendersonville uh, and uh, also last week we had a really good meeting every quarter we get together with the Sumner County planners and we have a meeting and talk about all kinds of different things and and it was our pleasure to host uh, that meeting for the Sumner County planners uh, last week and that was uh, uh, that went really well and that's everything that I have chairman okay and we also I, I think everybody already knows we have the final rendering of the zoning ordinance all the planning commissioners have a copy of yes, that now. that's correct okay one, one other thing I might throw in there we've started the process already of the revision of our subdivision regulations uh, so uh, we're going to be doing intense intense uh, staff meetings on that here over the next couple of months hopefully maybe by mid to late summer uh, we'll get uh, get that information uh, to the uh, Planning Commission and start having work sessions on those third Tuesdays. We'll let everybody know in advance uh, when those are, but more than likely we'll have a couple of work sessions on that and maybe on a couple of uh, couple of other things uh, here throughout the uh, throughout the summer. Uh, and yes, so that's uh, I just want to let everybody make everybody aware of of our zoning of our now when we do our subdivision regulations, it's going to be different. When we did the zoning ordinance, it had to go to BOMA. The subdivision regulations, that's just something that's approved at the Planning Commission. It doesn't, it doesn't move forward on the BOMA. It's the same thing uh, like our future land use map. When that's altered or changed, it's just at the Planning Commission. It doesn't move uh, on forward to BOMA. Okay, thank you, Mr. Free. Ms. Stringfellow, do you have a motion for us? I have a motion to adjourn, that we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Altizer, we stand in adjournment.